Hey there everybody, it's Mike Delisio with another solo mode review. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Chai from Dan and Connie Kazmaier and publisher Steeped Games. In Chai you are trying to brew the perfect cup of Chai and, and in the solo game, the three different solo games, you are trying to do the same thing, perhaps against an opponent, perhaps just trying to get the best score. I'm going to head on over to the table and I'm going to do my best to show you all three modes of solo play that are available. And uh, then I'll come back here and give you my final thoughts. Okay, here we see the setup for the standard solo mode of Chai. There's a couple of things that I want to um, just state right off the bat. Number one is that there are components that you're seeing here that may not be what you would see in the version that you would get. This is the deluxe edition. This playmat does not uh, come standard. The metal coins, I don't believe, come standard. Uh, perhaps even the wood uh, tokens for the T does not come standard. So just so you know, your mileage may vary a little bit as far as the actual components, but generally speaking, this is what you would see for the setup of the standard solo rules. And so the second thing that I want to kind of emphasize here is that there are with the deluxe edition of the game, like you see here, there are three different solo modes available in the game. So I'm going to talk about all three briefly. The first one is the standard solo rules. Then I'll talk about the co-op rules, which you can play uh, as a solo player. And then I'll also talk about the solo dice rules, which are only available in the deluxe edition of the game. So that being said, as far as components go in the standard edition of Chai. The differences are you're going to have one other color of tea that you'll add to the deck. So in this case, I'm playing as green, but I also took the white cards, the white tea cards as well, and those got mixed into the deck. So I start with a gold coin. I start with one card, a starting customer card here, and then the white T cards got mixed into the remaining green cards in the deck. Everything else is set up as per normal. As a two-player game, we've got two teacups, two tips that are available. This is going to be played in 10 turns. So the rules differences are essentially that you are trying to get as many customers fulfilled as you can in 10 turns. So it's a race and you've got a score that you're trying to, to reach. So just as per normal, you're doing the same actions potentially each turn you're choosing one action you're visiting the market you're taking items from the pantry or you're reserving a, reserving a customer and using an ability so just really briefly let's say for example on my first turn now i know i've got this customer that wants three of the green so i see a market a mint here that's set up well for me so let's say for my first turn i visited the market i took a gold coin I'm going to be spending two of those, so this would go back, and I would just get a copper here. And I would take all three of these. They would go on my T-board. And I'm getting myself set up. This would, of course, slide down and get refilled out of the bag. I'm not going to do that right now. So that's my first turn. I visited the market. Now I would move my thermometer up one, because there's 10 spaces on here. You get 10 turns. That's it. One out of 10 turns is done there. Now, for my second turn, I know I need this from the pantry. So three items, I'll take that. I'll look at potential other things that might be needed. I know we need two of those, so I'll take that. And let's just draw a blind out of the bag and hope we get another one. We did not, that's okay. Then we would refill. Okay, so at the end of this turn, now I can fulfill this order. All right, I need a green tea. I need this. I'm sorry, I don't know the, all of the, the, what they stand for, the pink, and three of the mint. So I would take my green tea token. I would take my three tiles that I had just gotten. And I would take this. And now I have scored this, and I get this tip which in this case is nothing. Not good luck for me. It is how the teacup spills, I suppose. And then I would move up another turn, okay? That's it, you're doing that for 10 turns and then you are going to kind of grade your, how you did according to this little score matrix here, okay? So that's it, 
for the standard game. Now I'll just kind of reset things for the co-op rules. Okay, so here would be a setup for the co-op rules. Uh, you'll notice there's not a whole lot difference and I didn't really reset the cards. There's really no purpose. I'm just giving you a general overview. One thing I do want to mention uh, about the standard solo rules that I did forget to uh, say, if you were fulfilling an order from the other color T, you'd have to pay a copper to the bank. So that's just something I want to mention because there's a difference to that here. So when you're playing in the co-op against the Chaiwala, they say, you also are going to do the same thing. You're going to choose a second color for that player. In this case, I kept it as the white tee just to keep things simple. Now, you're not playing over 10 turns. You're playing over five rounds, which is just like in the multiplayer game. You're going to start with your copper as opposed to your gold. And what you're going to do is you are going to play your turns as per normal. All right? You are going to... Uh, Take your, uh, take your turns, try to complete these orders, and you're doing it over rounds. And so when both of those T uh, tokens have been filled, when two customers have been fulfilled, you will end that round. Now, the difference is that when you're fulfilling customers, if you, have, uh, if you don't have that color T token, so I'm the green T player, you can take that, but you don't have to pay for it, okay? You still need that T token, but you're not paying for it. The Chaiwala, the kind of your, your co-op opponent there, I suppose, is always gonna fulfill the lowest victory point card in the pool, um, and they don't pay at all for it, all right? So they're always gonna be taking cards. They're gonna fulfill every time. And so you're basically kind of trying to play against that increasing you know pressure of always having a card come off now it is the lowest card if you were playing with more players it would be the highest card and you're trying to have more points than the chaiwala at the end of the game and so it's similar it's just not quite as much of a, a race they're just going to be always taking uh, they're going to be fulfilling cards every round okay and so that's really the main difference there. So now I'll kind of clear this again and I'll show you how the solo dice work. Okay, and so here we see the setup for the solo dice variant, which again is only available in the deluxe edition of the game. And so the main differences that you'll probably see here is that your AI opponent is actually gonna get a player board this time where they're gonna have their T tokens. You're gonna both start with a silver coin. And here are the two AI dice that have different faces on them that I'll explain as we go through. You're basically playing the game as you would with the normal rules for a two player. You don't start with a starting card, however, that's another uh, difference here is that you don't start with a starting card and you as the player would go first. So let's say for example, uh, I wanted to go to the market first. Uh, let's see, I, I see we've got some ginger that might be in order here. So I'll go ahead and spend my I'll go to the market, so I'll take three, spend uh, one of them, I'll get two back, and I'll take these two ginger. These would slide down and get refilled. So at that point, after you've taken your turn, the AI, is, you're gonna roll for the AI. So you're gonna roll these dice, and it's going to tell you what happens depending upon what comes up on those dice. So the first thing is, this just basically tells you, take a tile, any tile from the bag and place it on the AI board. Because for the AI, it doesn't matter what tiles are on their board. So you just take a random one, in this case I, I took a lemon, and when they're fulfilling customers, any of all of their tokens are considered wild. So basically, all of the, the, the things can fulfill anything on these customer requests, all right? So that was the first thing. And then the, thing, the next thing here is that the check mark says, fulfill the lowest face up card. So in this case, that would be this five. This is gonna get fulfilled, all right? So that's what you're doing. You are basically rolling these dice on their turns. The other things that you can do is you can be adding money to their board. You've got a three and a two and a one there, all right? And you also could get a uh, token any from the bag because those are all wild as well. And so basically that's it. You're taking your turns, you're rolling these two dice for the AI, doing the appropriate actions. You're gonna be trying to fulfill orders. The AI is gonna be fulfilling orders as well. 
they'll fulfill orders even if a check doesn't come up if they've got enough uh, of the uh, tiles and tokens. So the check mark does it automatically, fulfilling the lowest one, and then they also can fulfill through collecting their tiles and tokens. The one thing I did want to mention is that tip that I showed you earlier, which was a blank one. That really is only, there's two of these, and these came with the solo dice as well. So when I showed that in the original game, those wouldn't necessarily be there. I uh, just got them mixed in there. Okay. There's also a wild token that you can have and a wild tile that you can pull out of the bag as well. Those come with the solo dice. All right. And there's the rules for that. So there you go. That was a very brief introduction of the three different ways that you can play Chai Solo. Let's head back over and I'll give you my thoughts on all three of these versions. Okay, hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea of how the three different solo modes of Chai play out. And so now I just want to talk about my solo experience. And there's usually a few kind of key indicators that I look at in a solo game. The first thing I want to talk about is win conditions. Uh, is it a beat your high score variant? Is it an AI opponent? Well, in Chai, it's three different uh, potential win conditions. And so I'll talk briefly about all three. In the standard game where you are just playing a beat your high score variant, um, it's not my favorite style, generally speaking, of solo game. And in this particular game, uh, that bears through. I, I don't really feel like there's enough there. You're taking 10 turns. And a turn in a game of chai is basically doing one thing. You're going to the market, you're going to the pantry, or you're reserving a customer and using an ability. So you get to do those one of those three things ten times, and that's it. So it really is just an efficiency game at that point, which is okay. And you can do some clever things in the market uh, to, to kind of boost up and, and get the most out of those turns. But that's a little underwhelming, that particular win condition. When you're playing with the uh, cooperative version of the game, you do have a, a clear win-loss. You either have more points than the Chai Walla or you don't. And with the solo AI dice, that's also a clear win condition. You either have more points or you don't. So depending on which version of the game you have, your mileage may vary. You, you might have a beat your high score variant. You might have a uh, opponent with the Chai Walla. You might have the dice opponent. So depending on which version, your mileage may vary there. I also like to talk about setup and teardown. And Chai is a game with a fair number of components, uh, but at least in, again, and I keep coming back to this, at least in the deluxe edition of the game where you've got really nice inserts, that aids in the setup and teardown. And I think even in the standard version, although I don't have it and can't say for sure, I don't feel like it would be a uh, too much of a, of a chore to set up and tear down this game. For the amount of components it has, I think it really sets up relatively quickly. Now again, this is a very short game, and so if you are taking the time to pull it off the shelf, set it up, and play one solo game, especially the standard game, where you're going in 10 turns, you maybe feel like you're spending more time setting it up than you are playing, so perhaps you'd want to play two or three games in a row, especially in that mode. In the other modes, those take a bit longer, more of a kind of a standard length of a, of a light game like this. And, and so the setup and teardown is not a problem in this game. I, I, I think it's perfectly reasonable for the amount of uh, game experience you're getting. Now, the rules. This is, to me, the biggest point of contention that I have with the solo game of Chai. There are too many ambiguities, too many unsaid things when it comes to the rules for the solo game. And I, I, I have to admit that that left me frustrated on a number of occasions. The standard game seems relatively straightforward. That one didn't give me too many problems. I, I felt relatively comfortable. The AI dice, also relatively uh, okay, although again, there were some things that I felt were ambiguous and not clearly stated. Too many things left up to assumption to quote-unquote common sense, which may or may not always be uh, common. The cooperative game is where I had the most problem. I really feel like the rules as written are very, very, very hard to tell if you're doing it right. Um, 
I actually have played this cooperatively in a couple of different ways because I was not sure what they were getting at. They talk about the Chaiwala fulfilling a customer, always fulfilling the lowest point value customer. Okay, well, when always? After every turn you take? After every time you fulfill a customer? They don't say. And so that is really tough. I've played it both ways, as I said, and you know, it changes obviously the difficulty of the game depending on how you do it. If they're gonna if they're gonna fulfill a customer every time you take a turn, then that would make it qu uh, more difficult. Also, if that's the case, do you flip over a uh, tip token? Does that speed up the rounds? Again, it's not said in the rules, and I find that to be a relatively major oversight. If I don't feel like I am confident that I'm playing the game the way it's intended, that's a problem. So rules are a big negative. I really think that this is something that needs to be addressed if there are future printings. So overall, what do I think? First of all, there are a lot of things to like about Chai. As a whole package, the production is remarkable through the roof, at least in, again, at least in the deluxe edition. But I think even in the standard edition, you're still going to get gorgeous art. You're going to get really nice components based off of what I've seen. The deluxe edition, the components are through the roof. The insert is incredible. The, the cards are all of fine quality and the, and the wood tokens are of great quality and the, and the, uh, the, the ingredient uh, tiles are fantastic. So production-wise, Chai is through the roof. Theme-wise, I adore the theme of Chai. I think it's a uh, unique theme and I'm always trying to... to call on uh, designers and developers to bring about more unique themes. And here is one. And it's one where the mechanics of the game kind of reflect this peaceful, relaxing, calming atmosphere. And so I really do like the theme uh, and a lot in this game. And the components are great. The art is fantastic. Strictly speaking as a solo game, and I, I want to be very clear about that. This is not reflective of the multiplayer game where I, I have a, a different opinion. The solo game, as it is, I feel like it has some issues. Um, first of all, the fact that there are three different solo games is an issue. Which one is the best? Well, in my mind, I think that the AI dice opponent is the best. It's the one that I feel uh, gives me the greatest sense of tension, uh, which is what I'm oftentimes looking for in a solo game. But that's only available in the Deluxe Edition, and, and that's a bit disappointing. Uh, the one that I feel is best is not necessarily going to be the one that everyone has access to. And so that that is a bit disappointing to me. The rules, as I mentioned before, are far too ambiguous. There's too many things left to conjecture and to your imagination. Well, I think they mean this. Maybe they mean, I don't know. Do they mean this? Am I playing the game the way it's supposed to be played? And, and that that's just a problem. There's no two ways about it. That's a problem. Uh, the game is very light. And... If you're going to compete with other games of this particular weight, I think that you've got to come with something a little bit stronger for, for a solo game. I would not feel comfortable recommending this strictly as a solo game. If you are going to play it multiplayer and maybe play it once in a while solo, that's something that I feel a bit more comfortable with. But I have to make this review about just the solo game. And for just the solo game... I don't feel like I can quite give this a recommendation. I'm going to be giving it a 6 out of 10. It just quite misses the mark, because, per, mostly because of those rules issues. Um, and the fact that I what I feel is the strongest uh, solo variant is not one that's in the standard game. There's a lot of things to like about Chai, but the solo game just misses the mark. Thank you so much for your time, as always, and have a great day.